Good day, welcome to today's service. It's very good to be back with you. And um, today we're talking about Jonah and the great fish. And, you know, when I was thinking about this whole story, I, um, the question came to my, mind, to, to my mind, who ate Jonah? You know, um, how did this whole thing happen? But um, I want to take you back. A few years ago, I was in South Africa and I went to this lodge. There was a lodge near my brother's house and I was just walking and they had cheetahs there. You know, you could see them feeding the cheetahs and they had some wild animals there and some rabbits. And um, as I walked there, I met this little young black man and he started talking to me. And, you know, we talked and soon I asked him, you know, about God and, you know, and he said, um, you know, he wants to be a pastor or something like that. And then we sat down and he started to talk to me what I'm going to share with you today. He said to me that in the situation where Jonah was, you know, Jonah was thrown overboard. He was thrown into the sea. And um, this big fish actually ate him. And this big fish took him to Nineveh and spit him out on the beach. And the message he had that day, he told me, it is like our problems. You know, sometimes we fall into the deep sea. We think we're going to die. But God already arranged a fish or or a transfer to a new city or a new job or whatever. That thing that you think is going to kill me, that big fish. This little man said, um, God can use that to transport you very fast to where you need to be. Like if Jonah had to swim to Nineveh, that would take him, I don't know how long. But this big whale that God provided took only you know, three days later and spit him out there. So that was a beautiful um, story this young man told me many years ago, maybe 10, 10 years ago. And when I thought about Jonah and the fish, I wanted to share with that with you. But let's start with the scripture reading, um, Jonah 1, 17 and 2, 10. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to, to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Remember this, three days and three nights. This is something important that I'll, I will share at the end. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to, to the Lord his God. You know, sometimes... When life gets bad, sometimes when we are thrown overboard, sometimes when I remember many, many years ago when I was living in Sejong, actually I got married and I moved back to Sejong with my wife Michelle and I told her, I don't have a job, I only have a little, uh, a little one room there that I can use for 10 days in the church and then we need to find a place to live, we need to find money, we need to find everything. We need to start a new life. She just told me, God has already provided. Every time I stress, I like, she just told me, God has already provided. And like a Jonah, you know, we flew to South Korea with nothing, just 10 days to stay at a church in a small room. And in, within that 10 days, I was walking down the road and I saw these beautiful apartments um, right there in a valley in Sejong. Little that I know that this was where the rich people actually lived. And I look up to that building and said, God, I want to live here. I want one of these apartments. And, uh, but it was impossible. It was absolutely an impossible thing. But anyways, guess what? Ten days later, somebody gave the key money and we moved into one of those apartments. And uh, three, three months later, all the furniture came. The church people just started to bring their furniture. One of our friends, I think she um, donated her, her whole house to us because she moved away. So it was like a Jonah. You know, my situation was I was in this fish and I was wondering what is going to happen next. But my problem gave me so much more faith. If God could give me one of the most expensive apartments in Sejong, one of the most expensive cities. I mean, God can do anything. If God can take Jonah from the fish, you know, to Nineveh in three days, it is the same thing. So, but in that situation, 
I also remember the one day I was thrown overboard. You know, we've lived there a few months and suddenly I had to pay the rent. I had to pay many things and we had no money. I, real, I remember we had like manan. Some weeks there was manan, but with only manan, we could eat. I went to the store, I bought vegetables, and God just provided for us. But that day, I, I, I lost it. I was really sad. I said, God, I can't do this anymore. You sent us to Korea. Um, my wife said, you already provided. I'm stressing about the money every day. And as I walk, and it was hot, hotter than now. And I was like murmuring, God, why this and why that? And I went to my bank and I put my card in my bank to see what's left. And suddenly there was <coughs> two million one in my bank. I like, two million? I couldn't believe my eyes. I was just walking now to the bank. God, I'm a missionary. You said in the Bible, don't take anything. You know, he told the disciples. When you go, don't take anything. Don't, don't even take your purse. Don't take your credit cards. Just go. I will provide. <coughs> I was, you know, a little angry. And I look at my bank account. I saw two million one. There's no way. There can be two million in my bank account. I print my card. I went to the lady. I said, how much money is in my bank? She said, two million. I like, there's two million in my bank. Guys, that was such a brothers and sisters. Not guys, brothers and sisters. That was such a shock to me. What happened? One of our cell members decided that week that she wants to bless us with two million one. And she just transferred the money into my bank. But this was a Jonah situation. You know, I was over the board. I was swimming in the sea. How am I going to pay my rent? We still had to pay the rent. How am I going to pay the bills, the gas, electricity? How are we going to buy food? All these things. And in this situation, a big fish came or a big cell member, you know, and she put two million in the bank. And that made me so strong. You know, that made me so strong. To know that God will provide. And we've been here for how many years now? I, well, I've been here 15 years. My wife with me 8 years. And God has always provided. Always provided. So from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Brothers and sisters, when you're, when you're in a fish, when you're in the water, you think you're going to die. The next thing, this huge mouth gulps you in and you go through his throat and into the tummy. Just imagine the smell. Just imagine the seaweed. The Bible says, the, Jonah talks about the seaweed around his head. We love seaweed, you know. I just got the lovely box of seaweed for Jusok. That wasn't the, uh, Jonah's case. And inside this fish was a lot of assets. You know, it wasn't a pretty situation. But in that fish... Jonah prayed. You know, and how amazing is this? That fish was under the water. You know, God heard Jonah under the water. God knows exactly the words he prayed. Brothers and sisters, think about that. Jonah wasn't in church. He wasn't in his room. He wasn't somewhere. He was under the water. And God still um, heard him pray. If you go under the water... I hope it doesn't happen to you, but let's say you go in a submarine. Guess what? You can pray. God will hear you. God hears even under the water. Isn't that amazing? For me, that was so cool. He said, I am distressed. I called the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help. Brothers and sisters, when we go through these difficult times, call for help. That day I was, God, why didn't you provide? I didn't call for help. I was actually more fighting. But <laughs> God, God was gracious. And you listened to my cry. God hears us when we cry. But I, with shouts of great praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. These are the words that Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish. And, and, List and there, and the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah unto the dry land. So when Jonah prayed, God said, "Hey, spit him out." <laughs> you know, the Bible says God commanded the fish. Brothers and sisters, the fish understand God's voice. 
The animals understand God's voice. I don't know, but here the Bible says, and the Lord commanded the fish. He said, don't eat him, spit him out. And that's exactly what he did. That is exactly, and he vomited Jonah onto the dry land. It's amazing, you know, that, yeah, I said that, that God had heard his prayer from the sea. Also, when I was in an airplane one day, I was praying up in the sky, going, I don't know how fast, and I prayed, and I said, God, are you here? You know, just a little prayer. And God was there. I felt his presence even in a plane. So, I don't know, if, if you're in a fish, or in the sky, or in your life, you may be in a fish, you have got this debt situation, you've got family problems, you, meet to, you maybe need to move to another city, all these things can feel like sea, I'm overboard, I'm going down. But brothers and sisters, God has already provided. If that fish wasn't there, Jonah would be dead. You know, that fish, how long can we breathe underwater? I don't think, one minute or two, I don't even know, they be dead. So that fish was there, he was waiting. And when Jonah fell into the sea, that fish just gulped him up and kept him alive for three days. So I just want to, and I'm preaching to myself mostly today, you know, there is a fish. You're in a boat, there is a storm, you're falling over, you're going under. Just trust and believe. Even that fish is there. God has already provided that thing. Jonah disobedience. Jonah's story begins with a clear command from God. Go to Nineveh and preach against its wickedness. However, Jonah chose to flee the opposite direction, boarding a ship to Tarsus. This act of disobedience led to this violent storm, um, endangering everybody's life. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we make decisions. Sometimes we do things that put our life in danger. But even although we fail, God doesn't fail us. Jonah 1 was free, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarsus. Jonah's attempt to escape from God's command is a reminder that we cannot hide from God. Um, I have news for you. Psalm 139 verse 7 to, to 10 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn... If I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. This verse says God is everywhere. The sea up everywhere. God is everywhere. Let's look at the storm and the fish. As the storm raged, the sailors caused Lot to, to determine who was responsible, and the Lot felt on Jonah. Very, very interesting. So here we're in a boat. The boat is going like this. Hey, um, so they realize somebody did something wrong. Okay, let's cast the lots. And let's see. Um, and the lot felt on Jonah. That's another miracle. That's another miracle. And I was looking to casting lots in Bible times. So in Bible times, casting lots were a common practice. So they did this many times in the Bible. Like... Um, you know, there were different ways that they could do this. They used stones or pebbles, you know, were used for, for, for casting lots. And they also used um, sticks, you know, long sticks and short sticks. And then the person who draw the long stick or the short stick, that will be the lot. Or they also cast some um, kind of a dice, you know, when we throw the dice. And if you think about that, there are... Um, there are 63 different outcomes when you, uh, 36 different outcomes when you throw the dice. So all these things is very random. It's very, very random. But, you know, casting lots as, was seen as a way to leave the decision up to, the, up to God, ensuring that the outcome was not influenced by humans. Proverbs 16.33 says, reflects this belief. The Lord is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Well, this is why they did it. Look, Proverbs 16.33. The Lord is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. So those people believed 
If we don't know what to do, we need to throw a dice or draw sticks and God will give the right answer. I don't recommend you do that. Should I move to Jinju or Sejong, cast the lords or draw sticks? I don't know, but it's very interesting that in Bible times. Now, they did this many, many times. You know, um, the visioning of the promised land, the Israel used lots to divide the land among the 12 tribes. And choosing Saul as, Saul as king, lots were cast to select Saul as the first king of Israel. So that's again where they use it. And then there was Ark and Sin. After the field of Ai, lords were cast to identify Ark as, one, as the one who sent. And then assigning the priestly, uh, the priestly duties, lords were used to um, find out who's going to, to do what. And then when, they, um, when Judas betrayed Jesus, um, Ma- Matthias, they also cast lords to pick him. And then we have Jonah and the sailors. So these are all the places in the Bible, Jonah 1 verse 7, where they cast the Lord. So very interesting that God could use this to show them what to do. Okay, God's provisioning. Um, Jonah 1 verse 17. Now the Lord provided a huge fish that swallowed, swallowed Jonah. The act of provisioning shows God's mercy even in the midst of judgment. You know, Jonah did the wrong thing. Actually, he was supposed to die because he ran away from God. But still, God was merciful. Still, God provided that big fish. And here comes the question, who ate Jonah? I was looking on YouTube and searching on Wikipedia and everywhere. What kind of fish could swallow Jonah? And it seems that it is a sperm whale. So... The idea of a human surviving in a fish, like, you know, the story from Jonah, is still a miracle. So all the other whales, their throats are too small, so they cannot swallow Jonah. But a sperm whale, his um, throat is big enough, so a human being can go through there. So it could have been a sperm whale. The other interesting fact that I read, the sperm whales were there where Jonah was in that area. They were there. But then we have the problem of oxygen. You know, this inside a fish or a whale, there is no breathable air. So it is, how could he breathe in that fish? And then the, the digestive system. You know, fish and whales, they have all these strong acids that break down food. So God had to protect Jonah from this acids. God had to give him oxygen. It is more than just a fish swallowing Jonah. It also had to be the right fish. And then the fish also had teeth. The sperm whale had teeth. So, you know, it was easy for him to um, kill Jonah. And um, so it's still, it is still an amazing thing that he survived in this big fish. Interesting thing, this fish, you know, is um, up to 20.5 meters long. It can dive um, up to two kilometers deep, and it lives 70 years. So the fish that ate Jonah was a sperm whale. This is, this is what everybody thinks is what happened. Now, I found a story. This is a true story, a man that was swallowed by a whale. And when I saw this story, I thought, oh, it's same like Jonah. But let's read. A, a recent and well-known incident involving a man being swallowed by a whale happened in June 2021, not long ago. Michael um, Bacard, a commercial lobster diver, was diving off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, when he was briefly swallowed by a humpback whale. Um, Pargot was about 45 feet underwater when he suddenly felt a huge hump and everything went dark. Initially, he thought he had been attacked by a shark, but soon realized he was inside the mouth of a whale. He struggled to breathe and thought he was going to die. After about 30 to 40 seconds, the whale surfaced and shook its head and ejected Pargot back into the water. He was rescued by uh, his crewmates and taken to hospital with minor injuries. Experts believe the whale accidentally scooped him up while feeding and quickly realized he, he wasn't a typical meal leading to his release. 
So we had a journal experience, but that was just 30 seconds or 40 seconds. But here, journal was in the heart of this fish or in the belly of this fish for three days. Jonah's prayer inside the belly of the fish, you know, he said, God, God, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Jonah 2 verse 7, when my life was embedding away, I remembered you, Lord, and I prayed, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. You know, and God is a God of second chances. Jonah's prayer you know, showed us that God gave us a second chance. Because after three days and nights, God commanded the fish to vomit, to, to vomit Jonah onto the dry land. And then Jonah went to Nineveh and he preached salvation. You know, um, here, Jonah 3 verse 1 to 2 says, Then the Lord, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Our God is a God of second chances. If you made a mistake, if you missed it, if you didn't do exactly what you thought God wants you to do, here it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And I know, I know, for me, God gave me many chances. In my life, many times I said no to the Lord or I did something wrong. But here God says, Jonah 3, 1 verse 2, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim um, to it the message I give you. God's willingness to give Jonah a second chance highlights his patience and mercy. So God is wonderful. When we make mistakes, when we don't do exactly what God tells us to do, God gives us a second chance. And now Jonah went into that city and he said, repent. He used a few words. He said, um, repent or God is going to destroy the city. And the Bible says that whole city was saved. That whole city repented. The king repented. His officials repented. They fasted. They put ash on their head. How is that possible? I think Jonah looked very terrible. After three days in a fish, I think Jonah looked terrible and distinct. And everybody looked at him and then listened to to him preaching. And then when the whole city repented and said, God, we are sorry, God forgave them, Jonah got angry. Jonah was angry because, and he said, God, I just want to die because I knew you're going to save these people. Jonah was, wasn't a good pastor, I think. If you send me to a city and I preach and the whole Jinju finds the Lord, I will be so happy. But Jonah sat under that tree that God grew for him and said, why this? Can I die now? Because I knew you're going to save this city. Jo Jonah had a very, very bad attitude. But I want to finish with this. You know, another person, another, well, Jesus himself was in the fish for three days and three nights. Not in the fish, but the Bible talks about Jesus being in the grave, you know, three days, three nights. So this whole story of Jonah talks about also about Jesus. It's a prophetic word of Jesus that's going to die for us, or already died for us. And just as Jonah went down there and he prayed and God rescued him and God gave him a second chance, the Bible says when Jesus died, he went to hell. He took the keys of death. He got the full victory for us. And when Jesus came, now Jesus came to us and he's giving us grace. You know, Jonah talked to Nineveh and said, repent, repent, repent. Now Jesus is talking to us and say, accept me as your Lord and Savior so that you can be saved. And it is your choice. It is my choice. And I've made my choice. I know, I know Jesus is all I have. And I hope you have the same. Amen. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Ready, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen.